Hello and welcome in the next video. Today I will make a review of 3D XMAX free 3D printer after using it for over a year. I've made around 2500 hours on it and I bought it in the beginning of 2024. What means that my printer has already all the improvements and fixes applied after the problems at the launch. Some numbers for the beginning. The build plate is 325 times 325 times 315, 20k max acceleration, 600 mm per hour top speed, direct jive extruder, dual Z axis, heated chamber, and $749 price at the time of recording. Starting from positive side and advantages. The first one is probably its big print volume. 325 times 325 is exactly what I need for my biggest projects right now and it's really proven itself useful. It's nice with more than the standard 250 volume. The printer also runs Clipper, so it has very easy access through the web browser to all the settings and tuning. It also offers many ways to connect to the printer and send the file. It has USB port for memory stick to print offline, it has Ethernet mode to connect to computer through the cable, and it also has a regular Wi-Fi. 5-inch touchscreen works fine and is not laggy, as long as you don't have thumbnails of the files loaded. When it comes to printing, the quality is not disappointing, and I personally don't see much of a difference between XMAX 3 and Bamboo Lab P1P. Where XMAX really shines is printing more advanced materials. With the actively heated chamber, printing ABA or ABS or ASA is basically as easy as printing PLA here. It's really a must-have feature if you are printing a lot in those materials. It also has no problems with glass or carbon reinforced materials when using hardened steel nozzle. Nozzle heats up to 350 Celsius degree bed to 120 and chamber to 60, so there is space for more advanced stuff. So far this has been my go-to printer for all more advanced larger projects. Last advantage, the printer is built like a tank. Except the plastic shell, everything inside is really solid, thick and made to last. Belts are 10 mm wide, the bed is 6 mm thick and all the chases of the printer really feel stable. After 2500 hours of printing, I didn't have anything that broke and no maintenance was done except changing the nozzle. Now moving to the cons. The first and most important one. Avoid printers from the beginning of production. Those had some issues and problems, so it's best to buy a new one. Or if you are buying a used one, make sure that it's at least from 2024 production. All the issues were corrected by then. Another disadvantage is the auto bed leveling. This printer requires some time in the beginning to set it up properly. It's only semi-automatic, so at the first run you will need to set the offset yourself with a piece of paper. It might take a few reruns, so prepare for 1-2 to two hours of calibrating it. But once it's done, it's done. I never had to redo it, now the first layer is great every single time. But there are also two exceptions. Different materials behave differently, so for example for PETG the first layer will be a bit more squeezed than for PLA. You also need to take into the consideration time needed to heat up, so large bed to higher temperatures. If you are printing with bed temp above 70 degrees, heat up the bed and give it 5 to 15 minutes to heat sink to avoid the problems. Otherwise, the Z offset might not be accurate. XMAX 3 would also benefit from the camera. You can buy it separately and there is prepared USB port on the motherboard for it, but would be nice if it's built in. There also could be better spool placement. In default, it's on the back side, what's not convenient at all considering the size and weight of XMAX. From positive side, the spool holder is a really nice enclosed box with place for moist absorber. Very helpful for hydroscopic materials. Last disadvantage is again the size of the printer. 
I'm not talking here about the over 30 kilograms weight because I can justify it with how solid build the printer is, but the size of over 55 times 55 centimeters and 60 centimeters in height feels a bit unnecessary. It would be possible to design something more compact. Now let's give the printer some points. I divided the score to five categories. Print quality, first layer, user experience, features and price. And in each category the printer can get maximum 10 points. So print quality, 7.5 out of 10. I'm getting similar quality here as on Bambula P1P, but P1P can handle a bit better decorative materials like PLA. Default filament settings are most of the time ok and doesn't need any corrections. First layer, 6 out of 10. Once it's set properly, it works good and doesn't need any further adjustment. But it can be tricky for some users to set it up in the beginning. User experience, 6 out of 10. It works correctly and does its job, but it feels like standard clipper printer without any extra effort in the UI design or making slicer user-friendly. It's also missing the camera and touchscreen could offer some more extra functionality. But most of the time I click print and forget about it, and that's what matters at the end. Features 5 out of 10. It has input shaping, touchscreen, 8GB of built-in memory, filament runout sensor, auxiliary fan, active carbon filtration, basic phone app and actively heated chamber. What is missing is better auto-leveling, built-in camera, better slicer with some more material profiles and polished up interface for better user experience. Finally, price. 8 out of 10. The standard price of 9.99 was high but could be justified due to its build quality. But the current 7.49 is easy recommendation. You won't get here much of modern features, but it's a solid workhorse that is going to last, so definitely worth the current price. To sum it up, it's a really solid and durable large printer that is going to deliver good results. I definitely don't regret buying it and I was considering getting a second one, but I went with 3D Plus 4 instead, mostly due to curiosity of the progress that 3D has made as a brand. If you need big print volume in a reliable form, XMAX won't disappoint, especially with more advanced materials. If you are printing mostly PLA, you might find something cheaper on the market that will deliver better quality, but for ABS, ASA, nylon or glass reinforced materials, it's definitely a printer that will handle it without a problem. That's all from me in this video. Please leave some feedback or suggestions in the comments about the review, since it's quite a new channel and maybe I'm missing some relevant informations you would like to hear, or attest the printer in some different aspects. Consider also leaving a like or subscription, because there will be more reviews coming. Thank you and see you in the next one.